We are back to the next level show, your favorite health and fitness podcast in Southwest Florida. And for those that don't know, that is on the Southwest Florida side of Florida near Fort Myers, Naples, because people think, oh, Miami. No, it's not that place in Florida. Stupid. Uh, um, so it's <laughs> now welcome back. It's a it's a good way to start the week. I'm excited to kick off on Mindset Monday episode. We're all finally reunited. Mike has just been um, taking everything he's learned from our interview with Brendan and just establishing in the workplace from the looks of it. He told us like <laughs> two black, two black guys minimum this week because he had to say something twice, just establishing dominance, like in the chimpanzee world where they just beat the shit out of each other just to show alphaness. And to emphasize that's eyeballs, two black eyes. Because I heard two black guys. I'm like, what the hell did he do with two black eyes? No, 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 no. I said two black eyes. Sorry, I have oh, my Invisalign, my yeah, Invisalign it's the, trace. It's, in. it's the lift that I can't it, really hear what you're saying. It's the lift I found like to Mike Tyson, but he'll still beat our asses. <laughs> like if this we is true. Him. Um, no, You've but, seen him, right? Even like at, at this age, he's still moving bro, pretty, pretty quick. I saw yeah. a training. I saw a training reel. It was like 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Bro, the power this man has at his Speed. Age. Yeah, still his speed. It's still much quicker than the average individual. Like an average 20 something year old is still not moving as quickly as he is. Obviously, a professional boxer at a high level, sure, much a little bit quicker. But Mike Tyson was a specimen, man. He's a, I miss the 90s. Early I think I saw it was a, hi- I want to say it was a highlight of this year's Olympics in boxing. There was this Canadian dude there that he was just ducking and just, his defense was just insane he was he, he could not be touched just call him mc hammer because you couldn't touch him yeah <laughs> oh Basically. thanks for thanks for putting like that it. in my head for the rest of the day anytime <laughs> yeah you can't touch this <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, i think Mike, it, tell, tell us like a little bit about your experience there because i know it's um different than you've been ever you've ever done in your fitness career this is a whole new playground a new experience everything what's, what, what's going on yeah, so we're, I mean, we're still waiting. We just got grand opening date, uh, August 28th. So I'm a trainer that's not training and it's kind of weird, but it's going really well because we have been going through orientation and learning all of the stuff. And I, everybody's telling me that I'm smart because I'm doing really well with like learning the kickoff. We're doing actual tests. There's scores. I got a 98.8%. I missed one fucking question and I'm super pissed about it, which we'll talk about. Wow. We don't have to talk about that. What question but, was it? Um, well, it was part of the, the, uh, the pitch at the very end um, where, you know, if somebody says, no, I don't want to sign up or whatever. It's like, okay, well, is it like the overall cost of training, like the initial cost or is it the overall investment? That's kind of like, getting you caught up on not getting started today isn't that the and same? well kind of kind of because you know maybe it's the upfront cost right maybe they don't want oh, to fork gotcha, over gotcha, gotcha. this much to start today maybe we can find something and then they get paid on friday blah 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 so i missed that question and that question happened to be worth three points which brought me down 1.2 percent. so i'm a 98.8 percent um which I'm still happy with. It's still better. And I've still got the rest of the process down. I, I am digressing so hard, complete tangent. Um, but I'm seeing like, so like I'm, I'm doing well with it. And I also like, I know that I can build value during an assessment. It's just a matter of learning their assessment. And I know that I'm 31 and I'm, my brain is not what it used to be. And so I've been just practicing over and over and over and over and trying to hammer it in my brain and it's working. And everybody's like, oh, you're so smart. You're learning this so quickly. And I'm like, I have literally been like living and breathing this like twice a day because I know how dumb I am and I will forget if I don't do it twice a day. So, and I've been helping the other people kind of bringing them up and uh, trying to teach them the tricks that I've been using and all that kind of stuff. Nobody asked me to do these things. I just like helping people. And that's just like how I am. So the manager and the assistant manager are also noticing as well as the GM and the assistant GM because I'm there all the time. Um, and they're liking what they're seeing from me. I mean, nobody's asked me to do these extra things. I'm still doing it anyways. Um, Gavin tells me I'm just doing mic things. Gavin's my PTM. Um, and he's like, yeah, just keep doing mic things. Like you can stay here as long as you want do mic things. It's fine. So it's, it's going well, moral of the story. It's going well. And they're, um, they're talking about putting me to uh, the status of like manager and training basically, um, which I'm still be, uh, I'll still be a personal trainer. It's just, I'm going to have some extra responsibilities 
and it puts me in line for succession basically. So, um, which is honestly kind of the reason I made this switch to begin with. Um, cause my original intention was to just kind of do what Jonathan did, do my own thing, you know, kind of figure out my way, um, through the, the independent lifestyle, so to say. Uh, but this was an opportunity to see, you know, maybe I love, I love being a trainer. Maybe it's not something I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, maybe I want to get into more management or maybe I want to get into ownership or something like that. This became an avenue that I could take and it seems to be working pretty well so far because we're not even open yet and they're already talking about doing these cool things. So, um, but now I have to like put my money where my mouth is like literally because now I have a sales goal, a very lofty sales goal, which I intend on hitting. But, and that's also refreshing because nobody's ever told me like you need to sell this much every month. Like I was just did the best I could, you know, but now like I have, I have a, a target. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person I'm not like, I'm not like shit talking competitive unless I'm playing PUBG with my friends and then I will shit talk. But um, I, I'm quietly competitive with myself. Like I have high expectations of myself. So um, I don't know it's, it's really cool. And I am legitimately learning a lot from all the people around me. We have like a really cool team and I'm, I'm legitimately excited to, see everybody work and go through conversation go through the whole process and you know i'm already learning stuff from all these different people um so it, it's a really cool experience i'm super stoked that i actually made this change so i'm excited for you man that's the only thing that would have drawn me to go to a corporate uh gym was to not only just train anymore solely i would like to uh, i would have loved to have managed and helped other trainers i do it on my free time obviously we know back in the day when you guys were starting out certain some trainers you know i just chime in and it was something that i enjoy it's, it's, it's almost like training clients but it's different because it's your people it's the people that you know have the same passion and desires to make an impact so that's something i definitely would you know, never write off on my career is just to be able to be in front. So hopefully I'll be able to do the same thing to a bigger scale, maybe in the future, but that's yeah. cool to see you going through it. And it's, it's funny just to know only a couple of years ago, training wasn't even a, a thing for you to, as a, as a career option. Now, dude, you're living off of it. You're, you're, you're helping others do the same that you, you know, you went through. And I think that you're so fresh still with that. You don't have, you're not like beat it. You're not beat up from like the a lot of trainers are resentful, maybe hateful against the, the uh, industry for whatever reason, the, the older bet trainers, not all, some, but it's, you come in with a fresh mind, hungry, uh, you have uh, external motivations that are going to be also fueling that fire to, to perform and, and do well. And so I think that it's going to be a really interesting progression for you. Yeah, uh, I agree. And it's, it's, it's almost like, serendipitous it, it all seems to just be like lining up perfectly um so i i don't know i i'm not i, I don't know I, I don't really do like the whole fate or destiny or anything like that i maybe to a certain extent but if there's anything like that going on there's I, i'm starting to kind of see a little bit of it here because everything kind of seems to be falling into place in a very appropriate natural. way i guess you can say yeah a very natural way that's a good way of putting it um, well the thing is, what i always tell people it's that you know even though i have like a faith background i don't you know even with faith i don't even use that whole like manifest or declare necessarily as your as your stick is as your as your uh how do you say this as your as your first initial tool you have to my my thought process even if you if someone wants to look at any type of religion or scripture m most religions will always say like yes there is a faith component to things you have to have an open mind but it never it never just says you have to be lazy and expect things just to happen always yep. you have to put yourself in situations create your own luck you have to be in front of uh, people that's why i think it's important to be networking you never know that what that hi, how are you with that stranger may take you um, put in the best effort when you do your job, whatever it is, if, even if you're working at McDonald's or if you're in a, in a, in a big corporation, do your do such a good job that, you know, other people will notice because you just never know, dude, you can start in the most small gym, for example, and you end up, you know, helping running a, a, a massive corporation in, 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 in this case, the gym, just because you, you just come in with that 
always that I'm going to do the best I can do. And it could be for yourself. It could be for an external, like, you know, if some people work for God or whatever they believe in, but it's like, do something that's going to drive you to do a good job, period. And I think that it just increases your chances for success, more people uh, thinking of you when an opportunity comes up because you of something you did a long time ago. Um, you just never know, man. It's always about working hard. And I think this is a great topic because before we get into it, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to just jump into it, but it's kind of like you see the title of the show, uh, be the CEO of your life. And we use the acronym. Uh, I heard it from different people have said this is not something I made up, but control every opportunity and or, you know, outcome, you know, you can kind of phrase it however you want. Um, I think it's a pretty cool that we're talking about this and it kind of falls into our today's topic. Real quick, does this, uh, this, just asking for a friend, does this come with a pay raise? No? What would you say, John? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> I think I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was my joke. But once we start, once we start making <laughs> uh, a certain amount, then Mike will get a raise for his um, CEO ness. Yes. No, but um, you can check out just real quick for the listeners that don't know. Maybe it might, you might be new. You might have followed us from interviews or whatever. It's basically I, I have to remind people because people don't. I guess most podcasts don't do what we do. Is a it's a very selective Why? podcast. Why is that? I don't know. It's uh, they don't have a mic. That's the problem. They don't have a mic. You know what this is? Having show notes. Having Mike do uh, amazing show notes is like having a double stuffed Oreo. You can't go back to a single stuffed. Now mm. a double stuff is now the new single stuff. Wow. And a single is like half or it's like a tease Holy or it's like, what the hell is the point of that? Hey, can I just tell you guys something real quick? I found, I don't, I don't do ice cream as much, right? Oh, I, I told you about pregnancy. We had a lot of ice cream. It happens, right? So we kind of fell off that a little bit and I, I, did really well. I was, you know, the manager in training, blah, blah, blah. That whole thing happened. I'm like, I want some fucking ice cream. Like we're going to have a little bit of a celebration. We go a little crazy. Okay. Ben and Jerry's milk, milk and cookies, ice cream is fucking amazing. It's got like the cookie dough shit in there, right? This is a health and fitness podcast. I'm talking about ice cream, like thousand calories in this fucking pint. And it's got the Oreos in there too. So it's like chocolate chip oh, wow. and it's got the Oreo and it's like, like, as weird as this sounds, it's like normal ice cream. It's just like normal ice cream, but it's got all like cookie shit in there. It's so fucking good. I ate wow. the whole thing like shamelessly. It was so good. Uh, Got to check it out one day. That you just reminded Absolutely. me of that. So go ahead. No, I think that wasn't a perfect way to put it, guys. I mean, check out the show notes. It'll tell you exactly where we talk about each topic. That way, if you ever want to show this to a friend um, or share it, go down. You can see exactly where we timestamp it. You can share it on your uh, social media platform, but some of you have done oh, a quick little shout out to my uh, client and friend, uh, Dr. Emilio Rodriguez. He's one of my clients, also my dentist at the moment, helping me get my teeth right. But no, he's a great support. He's a he's the biggest supporter. He's actually the one that gifted us the t-shirts for people that don't know. So shout out to him. He's always giving us his feedback. I always ask him his honest feedback because he'll tell me, yeah, something happened with the audio or this is like going on. Like what you guys were talking about. Maybe people are going to take it this way. Maybe you guys can next episode, maybe talk about this. So he's always giving a, a amazing input. He says he's the, uh, what is it? The annoying, the annoying critic, but I never think it as annoying. We, uh, he's a big supporter. He's not on Instagram right now, but if not, he shares our content and we've gotten a lot of followers uh, and new subscribers due to his, him sharing and supporting the podcast. And to all you guys that do the same, you guys are awesome. We appreciate it. Big shout out to Emilio. He's more like a quality control. He just makes sure things that's what, are. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. He calls himself quality control. Yeah. Okay. Does that I come say with that? a pay raise? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, it's awesome. And, I, and just a little, I'm, I'm going to put him on blast a little bit more. He's a pretty quiet guy, but the guy is killing it in the gym. He's almost down officially 40 pounds in the last wow. like couple months, wow. eight months. Yeah, man. The guy has made a complete lifestyle change. Once, once we get to a point where he's at, he did a little bit of a progress uh, picture for himself on his social media when he had it uh, active, but the guy is doing phenomenal love working with him, love his mindset. And it just goes to show that it's a, it's a journey. It's a slow process for not, I hate using slow or fast, but it's a, it's a process at his pace where we needed to get him and improved his health markers. He had a couple of health markers that were to be, to be mindful of and got, went to the doctor. The doctor was really happy with him with everything that's going on. So not just from a weight loss perspective, mindset, as well as, uh, you know, overall health markers in the body, which is more important than just the aesthetics. Aesthetics are cool guys. We're not going to deny that, but these are the things that are going to keep you running in life. 
super important, more important. So, and then everything else as a, as a result will follow, but yeah. shout out to him, you know, always appreciative of that. Oh well, yeah. And that's, that's even better too. Cause it's, could you like blast somebody and get them to lose 40 pounds super quick? Yeah. But it's going to, it's going to come back pretty quick, probably yeah. even more so. And you know, the, with the way you coach, like I'm hundred percent certain that this guy's never going to see those 40 pounds again, as long as he stays on track, which I'm sure he will. Yeah. Um, the, best so thing awesome. is that, the best thing I know is for sure that he did it in such a way that it'll become who he is now and yeah. it will stick with him. That's, that's the biggest thing you can ask for as a, as a coach to a client and make sure that once you do it, they don't have to look for another coach to do the same thing you just did for them. Um, you want to make sure that you do it right a little slower, but this client may, never has to invest maybe so much money in their health and fitness. Again, if they do it's more out of a, just now you can say it as a luxury, if they want to do, maybe they do a bodybuilding coach or example, it's like they're doing something very specific, but when it comes to their health, you want to be that coach that is that that place that this person finally got to they're super either lucky to be there serendipitous or they took the conscious choice to take control of the action and they just vetted you out out of many coaches that exist which are still a lot of good ones out there but other ones that probably don't understand certain principles and fundamentals that are key for someone's longevity so um this goes for anybody out there doing well i have other clients that are doing all other clients are doing fantastic as well but his soul stood out just because we just talked about it and he's a big supporter of the next level show which reminds me uh before we move on that like uh, again another big shout out to emilio not only for his support but also for uh his progress that he's been doing which he's been working super hard for it just reminded me of um conversation i had with uh with a client that i had yesterday so this girl, um, Alex, been working her, with her for about, her and her family, for about, shit, coming on a year. When I first got with her, she was in soccer and it was off season and just wanted to get a little bit stronger um, to help out with the, with, the so with the season for soccer. And just recently, I just, um, she, she shared with me that what she wants to do now, uh, she really doesn't even care too much for soccer. She wants to get into now weightlifting. And this was like not even a big deal for her at all. So uh, then the mom reached out to me and said, hey, you know, can you work with her again? Because she hasn't really been in the gym so much and she wants to, but she just doesn't know what to do. And now since she got back from vacation, she's just all about it and she's just been, been in there. So that's that, that just, um, I was just very, uh, I, I guess, excited and, and, and happy that uh, I shifted her mind uh, for how to treat, uh, the gym and even just something that she would want to pursue, uh, going forward. So she's in, um, this is high school, high school student, high school athlete. And like I said, she was in soccer. Now she's, she still likes it and she's, she enjoys it because she's actually pretty good at it. But, um, this year she says, you know what, I think I'm going to want to go towards uh, weightlifting. I kind of don't really care so much about soccer because it's not like something that she can use like for, um, uh, educational purposes, like for a scholarship, uh, is what she's, she shared with me. But, um, for her to want to go in that direction, I was just like super happy. So it's awesome. Awesome. That's super cool, man. Are we ready to go? We, just, we All set. can transition. Cool. Um, for just the last thing for people, if you're listening to the audio version, open up your YouTube app or open up your Explorer page. Uh, go ahead and type in the Next Level Show on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. We're, it's slightly starting to gain some momentum. We want to keep just adding a couple of subscribers. Uh, our goal is to continue to get there to our first 100 subscribers. Um, we don't uh, have the, each one of us don't have a massive social media presence, but you know, the, we care more about the quality at this point of our listeners and our engagement. So if you want, go ahead and support us there. If you still like the audio version, all for it, and obviously subscribe so you don't miss when the episodes come out. We have a couple more interviews that we're going to keep trying to pursue that are going to be good stuff, good content, and any requests at all, any given moment, let us know. Just shoot us a message or leave us in the comment review on any of the platforms. We'll get to that. Um, so transitioning on to the topic at hand, we have becoming the CEO of your life. In this case, we mentioned, you know, controlling every opportunity and or uh, outcome. So the biggest thing, this is good for a Mindset Monday episode. You just looking at it from like, you know, Mike got me fired up, you know, just even stuff that's going on with my personal life as well. It's cool, man. It's just you, the, the truth of the matter is this. You can't rely, like we said, you can't rely on just chance. You can't rely on, you know, it's not, it's nothing wrong with believing what you believe. 
but I'm a big, you know, believer in any across the board, you have to, the biggest thing is you have to take control as, of, of as many things as you possibly can and, and, and create your own luck is what a lot of people will say is I'll create my own luck. Um, because if you solely rely on this, you know, you're, you're potentially missing out on a lot of opportunities. If you're just waiting for something to happen, you're sitting at home being lazy. This can be with getting a job and or getting in shape. You just can't sit there and it's just going to come to you. And this comes with, uh, you know, you can look at it from a motivational standpoint, but the, the key here is pretty straightforward. And it's going to be like, duh, Jonathan, like, what else do you think? But a lot of people still don't think this way, surprisingly enough, but it's, you know, taking that first step you need to take that first step in whatever direction that may that is as you start doing that we we can call it the butterfly effect we can call it any many different things you want to put labels on it it's just basically taking a step forward and as you do that it becomes easier and easier to continue to make progress versus it's always that hard first initial conscious decision of like i'm going to do this whether i'm going to get my ass in shape you know that's the first step is that decision to want to do so the second step will progress with maybe looking up some gyms or looking up trainers in the area. And then as a ricochet, you're going to start looking at, okay, let me, let me look at my fridge, what I got right now. <laughs> and you start looking like, oh man, I got too much Ben and Jerry's right now. I got to make an adjustment here. Too many double stuffed Oreos. Let me just uh, maybe uh, not buy any more this week. And then, you know, it's like little things, if, if that makes sense, it's just to take that in initial step. It's going to allow you to build some momentum. You know, we talked about in another episode on how to create your own motivation. It's not just going to be waiting for the motivation to then take action, then to get the results. You're going to have to take the action first because that's going to elicit some type of result or whatever the direction. Thus, you're going to get motivated from that to see yourself feeling better, seeing what you've been able to do in such a short amount of time. And that's going to spark that motivation to take, keep taking action and repeat that cycle. Not the vicious cycle. It's a beautiful cycle of creating your own um, outcome and opportunities. And would you call that a positive feedback loop? Yes. That's exactly yes. what that is. <laughs> so it's something where, like you said, it's not, you don't leave anything up to chance. And this is all in, in all aspects of your life, uh, health, um, career relationships, right? Someone's not going to come knocking your door. Excuse me, is uh, is is uh, is, is so and so here? I'm looking. He, I heard he was a good person to be with. So, um, no, that's not going to happen. You know, no one's going to do that. So you need to uh, just go out there and just 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 put yourself out there, in in anything that you want to change within your life, and so whether it be and again in all of these aspects, you you want to increase your um, the options or opportunities because if you just say, you know what, I'm not going to you know, uh, take another class to be better at work or change my career, you know, career uh, trajectory, then your options are going to be pretty limited. You want to have as much options as you want. Now, if you love, you know, uh, flipping burgers or working at Star, you know, let's say Starbucks, no, that's, that's a pretty awesome job. Um, anywhere, uh, you know, if you like that, then go ahead, do that. That's, that's you, it's your, your damn life. But if you say, you know what, I really don't like this, and they're the only people that are hiring, well, that's just because you those are the only options that you have out there based on your skill set, based on your uh, whatever it is that you have going on in your life at that current time. If you want to improve and increase those options, then go out, go out there and take like a course, take out, take a, you know, go back to school or an internship or just any kind of way that you can improve um, you that that. Uh, I guess, keep on saying aspect, that portion of your life that you want to make a, an improvement on, uh, whether it be health and just saying, hey, let me just clear out the stuff in my uh, in my fridge. Are you the type of person that is like a light switch that you need to just take it and just chuck it? Or are you someone that needs to, it's more like a dimmer that you say, you know what, okay, let me just uh, ease back on this instead of going for the bogos at Publix, you know, you just get the singles, you know, you just, uh, and then you slowly transition away from there at your own pace. And everyone is totally different. Just see what you, what you can do. Um, what's works for you and then just uh, take it from there and then again just to reiterate the whole um, not leaving things up to chance is uh, me use you Mike as you, if you don't mind as an example you know people saying oh hey you know you're just so smart you're all of this giving you praise well it didn't just happen you didn't just say oh yeah off the top of my head uh yeah it's uh, it's such and such that uh, this is what uh, happens with the heart valve and this and that or whatever no you because you study it and you go back you're putting in the work and if people saying, well, how, how, you know, how are you succeeding so much? And you're like, well, I'm actually working. I'm actually memorizing. I'm actually, um, you know, instead of sitting back and watching some, um, uh, some anime or, or playing video games or doing other stuff, which sounds pretty awesome. 
Um, instead of that, I'm devoting my time to uh, learning as much as I can and, and bettering and sharpening my, my knife or my tool as best as I can here. So that way I have more opportunities out there. Uh, I can become a candidate for a manager position. I can do this or do that um, because I'm putting in the work here. Yeah. And I mean, to kind of tie that up nice and pretty using what Jonathan was saying, I mean, I took action on those with zero guarantee for anything coming from it other than just, you know, like helping one of my soon to be coworkers out um, and, you know, studying because I knew I needed to, and I wanted to take it serious. Um, there's no guarantee that any of this was going to happen. I just, it's almost like a leap of faith in a certain type of way, but um, I, I like this as a, um, as a topic, I've always thought of it as like being the, like the star of your own show or like the star of your own life, be the, the protagonist of your own movie, whatever, like there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but. Hey, don't be a supporting um, character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be like an NPC in your own video game, right? Like you're the no. main character and I've, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and it's kind of like, like even when it comes down to like making decisions, making choices, um, not making a choice is still making a choice in a certain type of way, leaving something to just random, let, let the universe decide where I'm going to get a job or how my test is going to go or anything like that. You're still passively making a choice there. You're making a choice to just not really give a shit at the end of the day. So, you know, and that's something that's like, that I've kind of struggled with through a, a big part of my life that I needed to change. I realized, you know, like just letting, the cards fall where they may, it got me to a place where I was just not happy at all. I didn't like anything that was going on. And I had to get myself out of it actively, like one step at a time. And it didn't always work out super well, but I started actively playing a role in my own life. And yeah, I failed a little bit. You got to like, when you're doing stuff like this, you got to kind of mentally be prepared for the fact that like, it's not going to go perfectly every single time. You're not going to get the job. Sometimes you're not going to hit the goal. Sometimes but like how you respond to that is also a choice that you're should be making. You should actively be partaking in all the components of this um, so that you do control the outcome at the end of the day. Reminds me of a video game when you said a uh, cast of my own movie, like the star of the own movie and all that. It's just like, also you're, you're, you're controlling, you're the character of the game. And it's like, when you can, when you create your own luck, a good example that comes with the game that me and Mike played was uh, Sekiro. Like if you don't go to certain doors or certain portals or certain little like avenues in the game that are not part of this storyline, you don't get the opportunity to maybe get some extra little stuff that's going to make the game a little bit smoother for you. So as, as a little nerdy example there, we want to interject it. it was, I think it would be fun and easy for people to pick up on. Imagine playing like, a, let's just see, like a, a, a Zelda Ocarina of Time without any upgrades or Metroid or something without picking up anything. You know how hard that game is going to be? Why? Yeah. why? Why do that? Just make it easier for yourself by picking up these extra tools, these extra things, and making sure that you're uh, setting yourself up for a better opportunity, better better chance of success. And when you're picking, when, uh, you know, what, what jumped into my head is um, don't be a supporting character. It's like, uh, if you're, if the movie is Top Gun, don't pick Goose. You don't want to pick Goose. You know, he's, he's not the one to pick when you're doing that. I mean, if you want to be, uh, you know, pick, uh, what, what are the other two? Um, Maverick and what's the other one? Uh, I don't remember the third. Iceman. There's Iceman, yes. Maverick yeah, if you want, an Iceman, yeah. Yeah, if you want to be Iceman, okay, fine. If you want to be Maverick, you can probably like slightly better, but don't pick Goose. He dies. Spoilers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that actually just dated the hell out of yourself um <laughs> if i haven't already <laughs> in the last couple of episodes if people don't know no exactly. but um but yeah the the whole thing about creating your thing your own luck is basically yeah was, you have to go ahead and take those steps forward you have to wander around you have to see what this path may take you because that's kind of how i ended up where i'm now is because i well that's how me and gabe connected is just by putting out content i was by always trying to connect and that's how me and Gabe were able to find, like, yeah, I find out that he lived like, you know, just a couple minutes away. If not, if I was just, uh, you know, always just hiding in the shadows at all given time, which is nothing wrong with keeping privacy in your life. But if you never like ever step out of your comfort zone, you just never know the opportunities. Cause now, you know, we were able to st uh, establish a relationship. Thus I was able to meet someone. Uh, so person through, through Gabe's uh, relationship. So it, there's every, you just never know, never underestimate. That's why I hate people that are very close-minded 
with things in general, um, that it's, it's only their way in the highway. I think there's times to be really focused and very, uh, you know, with a very narrow uh, mindset, you was it tunnel vision, but yeah, tunnel vision. But those are the times that you have to be expanding. You have to be challenging your your current beliefs, your current situation, your current career uh, limit, or where you're at. Another rule of thumb is you can't control what necessarily will always happen as a reaction of something, but you can only control is how you, you know, you, your attitude towards situations and what steps you're going to take after that. You, something might come out, unfortunately, and it might throw you off for a bit, but you know, you can react or you can kind of let it, you know, well, well react, you're human, and then take some steps that you're going to need to kind of overcome that, whatever that may be. Okay. Well, even the the flip side of that about, you know, talking about how we kind of connected, I could have just said, oh, why the hell am I going to reach out to him? He's going to leave me on red. He's going to say, get the hell out of here. Who the hell are you? So, but he's so handsome. Uh, talking about you. Yes, you are. So, um, you know, it's, it, 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 it you know, who, who the hell knows, right? And even the people that we've, um, that we've had a chance to interview here, like, you know, we just took the chance said, hey, you know what, fuck it, let me just go and shoot our shot and just say, hey, so and so, would you mind coming on and um, talking to us? And, you know, for the most part, you know, everybody has, re- has been uh, pretty cool about it, but uh, responded <laughs> positively. Well, no? It makes me, it makes me think of the only person that hasn't said yes was, uh, Mike, who was it that you reached out to? Oh, oh yeah. bro. Don't, don't cut that deep. I'm riding high right now. I don't want to think about that. Ben Pollock. If you hear this, please. You're the only one I want to talk to. Speaking about Ben no, Pollock, you see do you think he's gotten? Yo, I know. Hey. Massive. I think he did a shit. bodybuilding competition, yeah, right? He went pro recently. So do you Crazy. think like if we were to ever get him on that me and you would be the quiet ones and then Mike would just be just talking uh, his, yeah. his his face off? I wouldn't let you get a fucking word in. Would you? So you would all. just just all you would be all in there. Yeah, I would. No? <laughs> I dude, I I have so many questions for that guy. He's so fucking smart. Yeah, and he's he's, good. he's like guy. everything that he does is like right in my alley. I don't know. I'm not nearly as strong as he is, but um, yeah. So let's not turn this into an episode about how awesome. Ben Pollock is. <laughs> ben Pollock, if you are listen, ever listening to the next level show by your own good goodwill, just you know, Mike wants us want you on the show. They want you on the show too, but really, Mike really wants you on the show. Yes, he does. Um, but preferably shirtless. <laughs> we just ruined the chance of having Ben Pollock on the show with that. The scratch this now. But what other thing? I was trying to think of something else that came to mind, but basically, we can use different examples. Um, we use a couple of fitness examples as far as you need to create, you know, opportunities for you to be able to, well, a good, well, this takes me back where I was actually my original thought, the people that you see that you admire, these people have been relentless with uh, pursuing either knowledge, you know, bettering themselves when it comes to health and fitness. So that person that you like may save their post by based on how they look, it's not out of chance. It just wasn't that one day they woke up and boom, these people worked their ass off, regardless of how they got there, they worked their ass off to a degree to be able to attain the physique that people admire worldwide. Because, and there's something about, this is why I like fitness, man, because there's something about a physical presence, because you don't have to use words, you don't, you don't have to talk yet. And, but if someone looks at you, and there's something about a, an impressive physique, and I'm not, it doesn't have to be the most extreme, but there's something about a muscular physique that just yells discipline that yells like i i try in life <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> like and it, it sounds silly but it's true if you think about it because like, you know how it is it ain't easy you know to maintain an x amount of level of, of muscle mass or some people it's challenging it's work it takes planning takes uh, patience takes you know maybe going through aches and pains that you may you know tweak something here and there and, the, in, and just not giving up you know you have to keep waking up keep doing your absolute best keep fucking trying and keep failing at times but you just keep come showing up over and over again and the physical attribute is just a very is a is a great way to see that without necessarily saying it it's a it, it's it's a way to show that and typically it's when someone has that type of um uh, I guess uh, if you want to call it success or, or progress within their own aesthetics or health or body, um, more than likely they are, are applying that in other aspects of their life, right? So they, they've seen that, okay, if I put in the work, then these are the results that come out, then uh, they would more than likely 
um, have applied that in elsewhere, whether it be career, relationships, um, somewhere other other than just the gym. And I'll, yeah, and I'll well, was, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was going to say that's exactly where I started and look where I am now. I mean, like I, I, I started off fucking miserable and out of shape and I helped with Jonathan's help. I got control of my health and my physique and I gained confidence and I realized, you know, there's, if I can change this, what else can I change? And then I did. And I, it just kind of kept on building and building and building. And I'm like, I'm so far past that point now that it's kind of like, it's kind of funny to think about, but it all started with just getting in shape. It was such a simple concept. And I learned so much from the process about myself that I am now able to do so much more than just get in shape and, you know, not be miserable anymore. Yeah. I mean, don't, and we gotta, we gotta preface by saying that just because someone has an amazing body doesn't mean that the other areas of their lives are doing Which, the same thing. That's, so I just, try to use my, I try to be careful with my words. That's to say so, not a guarantee. So, yeah. It's not a guarantee. So, but it, on very few people that, that actually grasp this and use that fitness principle, if they love fitness, if that's what they fell in love with, and maybe that changed their life for the better, applying the same principles of relentlessness, you know, showing up, not, you know, running discipline. Away from anniversary, discipline, patience, whatever the, you know, effort, you're gonna put that towards other things, your likelihood, your chances of, you know, of success increase. <laughs> And that's all that's going to guarantee you. Like, you know, you can work your ass off in the gym, but you may not become an Olympian. You know, that's just, that's not a guarantee. The guarantee is, is that you will be, look the best you've ever looked ever because it's your body, but you're, it's, that's the same thing. You, you increase your opportunity, you know, the possibility of something happening, but it doesn't know it's guarantee a particular outcome, but that shouldn't just motivate anyone from taking action, period. The only thing you can do is just control as many of these things as possible, these variables uh, when you can, and not to become some type of like neurotic, like, uh, I can't, I gotta control everything. Like, you know, well, how many scoops of my rice are you putting in my Chipotle bowl, miss? And it's not like, you know, it's not to that extent. Can you use guys. the scooper instead because I measure this. Yeah, it's like, can you, you grab your scale? You know, you know, one thing, you know, it's, it's just a quick thing a, a while back, just Shit. for experimental reasons, I actually wanted to take my scale on purpose and take it there. I just wanted them to like put it on and just pass it to slide it down and keep like adding. So I wanted just to see what they were doing, but what I did, I didn't want to be that asshole because I was always kind of shy of doing that in front of people. If there was like a big, like say it was rush hour and I was fucking stuck with a bunch of people would be like, get it moving asshole. Um, so I'd be like, I took it home and I did that. I, I reverse engineered. I, I kind of like, so I literally scooped the meat off because it was the top and then I skipped the boop, skip, uh, scooped the beans and scooped the rice. And I was able to see roughly how much um, they serve. And it was a you recall roughly. What was the, the calorie total? The, the steak was pretty close to the four ounces. So I know that's why they have on the on the apps, why they have it set up that way, because the scoop is like legit, like technically mm -hmm. supposed to be X amount. So yeah, it was pretty close. I thought I was getting gypped by a lot. But I was like, I think it was like 4.1 and it's because they gave a decent, but you have to make sure that they give you a full scoop. If they gyp the fucking scoop, you're gypped of the four ounces and that's what you're paying for. Just remember that. Imagine you're there with uh, with your scale and you have it on top of the counter and be like, okay, can I have that back, please? Okay, that's uh, four ounces. Can I have that back, please? So You'd be a I'm, real asshole there. This is actually like a really useful tip. Okay, are you ready? I don't know if we talked about this before, but I saw this once. Um, if you're going to ask for extra meat on like Chipotle or whatever, mm -hmm. um, yeah. don't ask until they commit to the size of the scoop that they give you on the first one, right? Because if they put the first scoop in thinking you're only asking for one, they're going to give you a good one, right? Ask at that point, because then they're committed to that size. They've already established how heavy of a scoop you're getting. You're going to have to double up on it. So you're going to get a yep. little bit of extra. Yeah, that's a, that's a life lesson. I think I gave that yeah. on an Instagram tip on getting more meat. Did I get that on... from you? I don't know. I mean, I other people, it's, other, it's, other, been, it's been around uh, for a other, bit. Other, other people have talked about it. Um, but yeah, you know, we're no, going to say yes. That John originated, originated yep. that. We're going to say that. That, so that is from John Fitness. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Um, no, but yeah, it does make a big difference, guys. I tell you what. But have you ever gotten the people that like are literally like, oh, when you ask them, like, dude, I had this lady at Moe's, fuck that girl, because she was like literally being mad, like disrespectful. She, with the biggest attitude, I've never seen one slap 
like the guac on my bone <laughs> so so violently and, and looking at you and in the she, eyes while you're doing it while she did that right well she like threw it like you can't see me if you're not on youtube like you're like you just see the thing go but but and the fucking thing went so fast it went off my plate like it flew off my bowl and i'm like damn and i looked at the guy Oh, because I asked them for the double steak after, but they were running low mm. on steak to begin with. So I, oh, this is the worst person to ask this because she was like, the bowl was already at the end of the line, but it was a weird backed up line. It was, it was just weird how that the whole interaction was that she literally had my bowl on one side and she ran to grab the scoop on the other side of the, of the line. I'll skip through somebody, grab it. And then she just fucking chunk, like slung it. And all of it landed. I, it was just weird, but she was really mad. I looked at the guy next to me and basically told him like, wow, God, she really seems to love her job, doesn't she? And I said it like kind of loud. <laughs> she was just like had multiple color hair and just with the, the big pants, the gothy pants. Um, she just looked mad the at The Jinko jeans? Yeah, I just looked mad at everything. I don't even think it was me, but it was just mad at life. So is it, I just always she find needs, it she, weird. She needs to listen odd. to this episode and control every outcome. There you go. She didn't control that one. <laughs> or maybe she did a bit too much. It, I just always find it weird or odd when you are you go to places like uh, that is either customer service focused or retail or anything. And the person is just like a real, you know, dick. I mean, like, okay, what, what the hell did I do? I mean, if I was a jerk, then fine. But I'm, I ain't doing nothing to you. I was at Target the other day. And I go and because um, uh, we got uh, uniform clothes for my daughter uh, a couple of days prior, then they went on sale. Then I said, hey, you know, I need to return these and they're on sale. They don't have the size because there's apparently a uniform shortage or something down here. And and she, she's just looking at me. She first her eyes were just like like this, she's like barely awake and had like the face of someone that just really couldn't give a shit and just talking like that. And I just stared at her like what the fuck. But you are the worst person to be here in front of me in, in, in customer service. You should be like in the back somewhere or something like that. Don't 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 be stocking here. shelves. Yeah, like what the fuck? Like okay, like what I do? I'm asking you to do something. I mean, I'm not being a dick about it, but I just I, and I've been there in her position, so I can empathize empathize with um, retail workers, customer service uh, people. So uh, it's just some people are just not suited for that. And if you're not suited for that, which totally cool, don't be there. That's just um, that's a great way to kind of end this show on. I think it's uh, just be happy for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, this is that's right. Just be cool. Don't be you know uncool. Yeah, don't be that lady from Moe's. You know, I wonder if she still works there. Anywho, probably not. Final thoughts, boys. Anything we want to add for your segment of the show? I got a couple of riddles. Hit us. Short, uh, sweet, to the point. All right, go ahead uh what goes up but never comes down fuck i've heard this before i know that's that's not the answer i know (laughs) tick (laughs) (laughs) it's your Uh, age yeah yeah hello okay uh what tastes better than it smells jackfruit it's your tongue oh Hello. Yeah. Have you ever smelled jackfruit? Uh, like yes, shit. actually, I have. Yeah, it smells, it smells like terrible. Yeah, it smells awful. But it doesn't taste bad. I didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm good. This is uh, this is my daughter's, my youngest. Um, if I remember it correctly, she goes, uh, "What type of house weighs the least? A lighthouse." I was gonna, like, yeah. I was gonna be uh, okay, like lighthouse. Okay. I like good that. thing. I, the good thing I jumped in beforehand. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That was I was like it. All right, well, listeners, you heard it here first. The next level show. Control every opportunity and or outcome in your life. Start the week off on a positive note. Go kick some ass. Let us know what you think. If you guys like this type of content, leave us a five star rating and review on any other audio version platforms, preferably Apple. If you have an Apple phone, if not, go ahead and leave a thumbs up on the video on ins- on the YouTube channel. Check us out on Instagram at the Next Level Show. My personal page is at John Alva Fitness. Gabe, he's at Prime and Glory, and Mr. Mike is at Mike Noah's PT. And until the next one.